This is Business Week Armenia, Civilnet's weekly economic digest. Here's what's making news in Armenia this week. An Emirati low-cost carrier is reportedly planning to take Yerevan to court over a failed joint venture to create an Armenian national airline. That's according to the local news site News.am, which reported this week, citing unnamed sources familiar with the matter, that Air Arabia is planning to file an arbitration claim against the Armenian government over the apparent collapse of Fly Arna. Civilnet has not independently verified News.am's reporting. Civilnet sent repeated requests for comment on the matter to Air Arabia, which went unanswered. Air Arabia, a leading Emirati budget airline, partnered with the Armenian National Interests Fund, a state agency meant to co-invest in major ventures with foreign governments and companies to create Fly Arna in 2021. Air Arabia and ANIF each invested more than $11 million to take equal stakes in the joint venture to set up a new Armenian national airline. Then in January, Fly Arna suddenly halted all flights and moved its fleet to the United Arab Emirates in still unclear circumstances. That news left officials in Armenia scrambling to explain how Fly Arna had apparently come to the brink of financial collapse after just a few years of operations. As allegations of corruption and mismanagement at ANIF mounted over the following months, Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan's government moved in March to temporarily suspend Fly Arna's operating license and then in May to dissolve ANIF in its entirety. The scandal-ridden state investment fund's dissolution has also derailed a $174 million joint venture with Mastar, the Emirati state-owned renewable energy company, to build Armenia's largest solar power plant. Last month, Economy Minister Gevork Papoyan confirmed his agency is trying to salvage the deal, but indicated Mastar is now demanding unspecified changes to the terms of the agreement. Civil net inquiries to Mastar have also gone unanswered. Reports of Arabia's plans to take Armenia to court come just weeks after a minority shareholder in the country's biggest mine filed a historic $1.2 billion arbitration claim against the government, which also holds a stake in the enterprise. In its filing, Walnort Finance, a Cyprus-registered shell company that owns a 12.5% stake in the Zangas Recopper Molybdenum Combine, is alleging the Armenian government undertook a politically motivated campaign to deprive it of its legitimate shareholder rights. The damages Walnort is demanding are equal to just under a quarter of the Armenian government's total budget last year. It is the biggest lawsuit ever filed against the government, which has so far not commented publicly on the matter. In related news, the United States is highlighting weaknesses in the rule of law and judiciary in Armenia as a key hurdle to attracting more foreign investment to the country. In its yearly investment climate statement out this week, the State Department specifically name-checked Armenia's small market size, relative geographic isolation due to closed borders with Turkey and Azerbaijan, weaknesses in the rule of law and judiciary, and a legacy of corruption as obstacles for foreign companies looking to do business in Armenia. While finding that overall, Armenia has received consistently respectable rankings in international indices that review country business environments and investment climates, the agency warned that otherwise sound regulations, policies, and laws are sometimes undermined by problems such as the lack of independence, capacity, or professionalism in key institutions, most critically the judiciary. Continuing, the State Department also noted that business groups and international organizations have raised concerns about the government's assumption of minority ownership stakes in several major private companies. Under Pashinyan, the Armenian government has moved to take substantial stakes in a number of large and strategically important enterprises, often in unclear circumstances. That includes the Zangazur Copper Molybdenum Combine, Amosar, a long-stalled gold mining project, and Viva Armenia, a major telecommunications firm. There was no immediate reaction to the report from Yerevan. You can also take a look at our latest interview with high-tech entrepreneur, executive, and investor Adam Kablanian, who joined us this week to talk about how Armenia's IT scene has evolved over the past two decades, and why the country's ambition of becoming a regional tech hub requires a revamped educational system. Here's some of what he had to say. After like the initial growth phase where we were tapping on Soviet tri uh, trained scientists, you know, they had an excellent education system, but over time, uh, their little investment went into higher education in Armenia and start becoming more and more difficult for high quality tech workers to be available for companies to hire. So it's really, really challenging because without that, I don't believe Armenia can be a tech center in the future. You can find our full conversation with Adam Kablanian up now on civilnet.am or through the link in the video description below. And as always, please follow Civilnet for the latest news and independent reporting from our contributors on the ground here in Armenia.